All right, then, if you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to, re to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 8. Uh, and while you're turning there, I meant to mention my mom, uh, and she was just a tiny bit better today, and we give the Lord the praise for that, and um, continue to remember her when you think to pray. Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Matthew chapter 8, in the first verse, the Bible says, And when he, meaning Christ, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer, and offer the gift that Moses commanded thee for testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, I am, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers un under me, and I, say unto, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another come, and he cometh, and to my and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found faith, so I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. In verse 13, the Bible says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Dear Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you great glory and honor this morning, uh, this evening, for just being on the throne and doing what seemeth good to yourself, Lord, and for accomplishing your will in the world as we live it in these days, Lord. We Thank you that you're our solace that we can run to when it seems like everything else is going awry, that you're on the throne, uh, you're doing what seemeth good into yourself, and nothing has ever got out of your hand, and we praise you for that. God, help us tonight to preach your word, and we would be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now. I'll be preaching this evening on the authority of Christ. Yeah. Now, a lot of times we uh, really don't think about the authority of Christ, but rather we think about the authority of Jehovah God, God the Father, Jehovah Jireh, and we really don't see that Christ had the same authority as, uh, as the Lord God. He had the very same ability, he had the very same thing, and really, the only thing I know of that God the Father don't know, that the Lord Jesus, I mean, that God the Father knows that the Lord Jesus Christ does not, is the time of the end of this age. Besides that, I think he knoweth all things. And so, in the first verse, it says, and when he was come down from the mountain, now, I, I think it was last week, but it might have been the week before that on Wednesday night. Uh, uh, we looked at a portion of this when they were going up on the mountain, and I believe the multitude stopped about halfway because he said his disciples were up there. Now, when he came down from the mountain, I want you to see that a, a, a general following began again. And uh, see... There's a lot of people saying they follow Christ tonight when they don't follow the Christ of the Bible. Now, the problem is this, and what I've seen among many people, they want to be rewarded for following Christ. Yeah. Now, let me say this, if you follow him tonight, it's simply because his goodness and mercy and his grace, nothing of you, not have I done, 
but what he's done. And so we find then that he descends the mount, and not his disciples, but the multitudes pick up on him again, probably wanting something to eat. Verse 2 says, And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Now, we talked a lot about worship in, in the last few years and, and really getting our mind around what worship may be. And I don't know that I know any more than I did three years ago. I really don't. Uh, I, but I want you to see it. So he came and he worshipped him. Now, I believe at least in part what we find this leper to say is a little smidgen of worship. A little bit of, of what worship is about. And, and so I want you to see the first thing, uh, the leprosy, we all know it's a type of undersin, and that consumes the, the leper bit by bit, little by little. And the way that I understand leprosy is even though it consumes the body, it's painless. And that's a pretty strange illness, isn't it? Literally consuming your feet and your fingers and not really hurting. See, a lot of people don't realize that sin's in their life until it consumes them. Amen. And then, and when it consumes them, they realize and understand, oh, this has been with me all along. And so we find that that was that kind of worship. And behold, there came a leper that worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, Thou canst make me clean. Now, I want you to see the worship portion of this is twofold. Number one, he knew that Jesus had the ability to do it. Yeah. And a lot of people don't recognize this. You know what? If you want a divine healing tonight, go to, go to Christ through the person of the Holy Ghost and acknowledge you know that he can do it. Then the next thing, he says, if thou wilt. In other words, you can't, dem you can't demand anything from Christ no more than you can demand from God. And so he, he worships in two ways. Number one, he acknowledges that Christ is able. And then secondly, he acknowledges it's under Christ's authority. In other words, you can't, you can't demand a divine healing. It's no more than demanding salvation. It's just an impossibility. And so we find here that this leper, and I'm assuming it was a Jew, I don't know, because leprosy was in it. And the reason I think that is he was instructed to go back to the priest. And and, and so, and leprosy was kind of a Jewish disease anyway. And, and, and so he comes to him, and he acknowledges all that. Then Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. In other words, this is my will. This is my divine appointment. I am going to say this. Now, he wasn't saying, you know, uh, I'm supposed to work a little while tonight, and I will go up there and work. He was saying, this is my will. This is my design. This is what I want. This is, this is my decree. It's my will that this happens. Now, let me say this. If it's not in Christ's will, it won't happen. And, and so we find that the uh, Lord Jesus says, I'm going to do this. This is done. He goes, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, I think it would be interesting, and if God had wanted us to know, I guess we would have known, I know we would have known, at what stage of leprosy was he? Was some of his fingers done falling off? Did, did he have, was he missing a foot somewhere? Because that's, it starts on the outside and works toward the core. Mm -hmm. And and, and uh, kind of how sin does, is it not? And, and and so I don't know what shape this man was in, but he must have been in a pretty bad shape. And just simply, I will, and it was all gone away. You know what? That that's the way it works with salvation. Is in immediately, in an instant, all your 
sin is gone. Now, people sometimes acknowledge that, but they don't want to acknowledge that it's gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next time somebody challenges you with that, you turn over in your old King James and, and, and show them 1 John 3, 9. The Bible says, and he cannot sin, for his seed remaineth with him. In other words, uh, it's, not a, it's an impossibility. And, and, and so we find here that this, um, this leper uh, got a divine movement of the Lord, and he came out clean on the other side. Now notice, uh, notice verse 4, the instruction. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded yeah. for a testimony unto them, meaning the Jewish priests. Right. Now, he, he, uh, he didn't want him running through the city. I'm clean, I'm clean. Nothing like that. He says, you just follow the Mosaic law. You go in and offer the prescribed sacrifice, and that way the Jews would know. That, that way they would understand what had occurred in his life. And that, uh, that was his hope that, that uh, it would be a testimony to them. Verse 5. And when, they, and when Jesus was entered unto Capernaum, uh, which was a, uh, a city totally occupied by Romans, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now, I want you to see a centurion is a Roman soldier with a small brigade under him of about 100 men. That's what centurion means. Centa means 100. And, and he had this group that was under his authority. And uh, I want you to see that's a good thing in a sense when you have a little bit of authority on your way, but as my mom always says, don't let it go to your head, and, and that's a problem too, but I want you to see that his authority ended at 100 men. See, uh, you may think you're in pretty good shape tonight, but your authority ends uh, with the intervention of Christ. You, you, you don't think, you, we don't have this by the tail hardly like we think we do. And, and, and so we know certainly that Christ, uh, the Lord God, Christ, the Holy Ghost, God the Father, they're the one in control. So the centurion explained his authority. Verse 6, uh, and saying, Lord, now notice how he addresses him. He addresses him as Lord, a little captive Jew, a person that he really don't even know, and he's saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Now we have a little bit of different kind of physical condition. Um, first one was leprosy, and now we have the palsy. Uh, that's a neurological condition. That's, uh, you might think it's Joey has a palsy. And a lot of times uh, they're in pain. A lot of times they uh, can't follow direction. A lot of times there's some difficulty there. And so he understood apparently who Christ was. Now, if you don't understand anything else about the message tonight, you get this one. Disease is under the power of Christ. It's under his authority. So if you're suffering something tonight, it's under his authority. Don't, 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 don't give credit to the devil where credit's not due. You know what? My kidney's been acting up a little bit, and, and that's under the authority of Christ. So why should I buck up and kick the brake? Because that has to be under the authority of the Almighty. And what he says good, is good for me is good for me. And so we find then that this centurion comes to him and, and has a better understanding of the authority of Christ than the Jews did. And, and so he says, um, 
in uh, verse 6, I mean verse 7, and Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Now, remember, one's a Jew and one's a Gentile. He was sending a testimony of his divine healing to both groups. To both, both in, groups of individuals, he wanted them to know that disease, physical disease, was under his authority, not under the devil's. Uh, verse 8, and the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, why would he come up with this? Well, the very reason is this. He knew he was a Gentile. He knew that he had persecuted Rome. He knew that he was the Roman. He was uh, under the authority to keep the Jews under the thumb. And he says, listen, I'm not even worthy that you should be there. You know what? I wonder how many times of us stop to think when we have this Holy Ghost within us, how unworthy we really are that he would even meet with us. See, this centurion understood, did he not? He, 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 he had a better grip on who he was than many times that, that we do. And so he says this to the Lord. Uh, verse 9, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say uh, to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth. And he doeth it. Now, I want you to see, as the centurion describes his authority, what he's really doing is acknowledging the authority of Christ. See, the authority of Christ is beyond anything this world has to offer. Have you ever been really hurt bad by somebody well, remember this, this is under the authority of Christ. And a lot of times it's just to see how we'll react. Not that he don't know that how we'll react, just to show them that you how you react. And, 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 and sometimes it's a nice person, sometimes it's a not, not so nice person, but it all is for your benefit and for your good. It, it's a good learning experience. And a lot of times when we get in a situation, somebody kind of a little snooty, a little hard to get along with, we don't think about that, but it is there for our benefit. Uh, verse 11, I mean verse 10, And Jesus heard it, and he marveled and said unto them, uh, to, uh, and, he, and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Now, I want you to see this. Why, why was his faith measured any more than the, the Jew leper? Well, because the Jew leper came to him and said, heal me. See, you realize now we can't go into Christ carnally. We can't go into Christ fleshly. But see, salvation comes through faith, just like this old, this old Gentile soldier. And he says, listen, I, I'm not worthy even for you to come to my house, but if you'll just, if you'll just speak it. That, that's a great deal of faith, ain't it? That, that's a great deal of understanding the power of the Almighty. And, and, and Jesus marveled and couldn't believe a faith like that illustrated by a Gentile that didn't even have any real understanding of what God is about. Now, for time's sake, we're going to skip 11 and 12, but if you want to read it this week, it has to do with some end-time prophecy. And, and you can look at that if you want to. Verse 13 says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. Now, I want you to see an interesting thing in the language there. He didn't say, as, though, as thou hast said. He said, as thou hast believed. So apparently, that old centurion believed God was able. Yeah. Apparently, that old Roman centurion had confidence that Jesus would do it. 
Do you have the same? Is that something that you have within you that you yourself would believe no matter what the circumstances that if Jesus said it, it would happen? So we find the first thing that really is completely under the authority of Christ is disease. So why do we get so, so weirded out when, when we hear these bad news and, and these situations and cancer and the lab work don't look too good? You know what? Best way to handle it is remember it's under the authority of Christ. You know, not one thing has ever happened in all the history of man that was not given of Christ. Hard, hard to believe when you begin to think of that, huh? But it, it, but it, is, uh, it is very much the truth. And so we ought, to, uh, we ought to understand that and give him honor that disease is under his authority. Yeah. Gospel of Matthew chapter 8 again. We're going to drop down to verse 22. And this chapter is just chucked full of the authority of Christ. Matthew chapter 8 verse 28. The Bible says this. And when he, meaning Christ, and when he was come unto the other side, and to the country of the, of, of the of Gerigesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce so that no man might pass that way now in addition to being a very real event coming out snarling and in their face and preventing the gospel or trying to prevent the gospel see when you try to when you try to preach the gospel there's going to be some fierce opposition every time and so we find these demons possessed, and we're not going to get quite to, to demons themselves just yet. But this individual was, these two individuals weren't demons, they were possessed That's right. of devils. And there is a huge difference. Uh, they're, 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 they're two totally different states of a spiritual condition. See, uh, a demon possessed person has a little hope, right. a devil doesn't. There, there's no hope whatever. And, and, and so we see then uh, that these two demonically devil-possessed people was going to thwart the plan of God. You know, that is an impossibility. You're not going to get in the way of God. And, and, and we see that right here. We see that it is an impossibility. Verse 29. And behold, meaning that his demon... And behold, they, meaning the demon-possessed man, cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, they knew Christ. Now, you remember just a, a little bit further down the road in the Acts of the Apostles, and, uh, and, and the devil spoke back to that one fellow and said, Christ we know, and Paul we know, but who are thou? Uh, see, demon people, the demons know each other. It's not, demons are not omnipotent. They don't know everything, but they know each other. And, and, and so when, uh, and they know who can rebuke them, and they know who can't, and they said, well, we know. And so these two came face to face, and immediately they recognized Christ. Immediately they knew that they were standing in the midst of the Son of God. Immediately they understood and knew who they were dealing with, sometimes a lot better than supposed Christian folks. Now I want you to also notice it says, are you going to torment us before the time? See, there's a time when they're going to be tormented. There, there, there's a time when they'll be cast into the lake of fire. There'll be a time when, when they will be punished for everything they've done. And you know what? That's still out in the future. Because you think about when the devils were cast down, where were they cast to? They were cast to this earth. They weren't cast into hell. Yeah. And, and so they're still doing Satan's bidding 
But one day they'll pay for it. And see, apparently they knew about it. Right. They said, hey, it's not time yet. Right. It, 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 you, you, you're ahead of schedule. And, and, and so it often makes me see how desperate Satan's getting because he, know, he knows the hours at hand. And uh, verse 30, And there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us not to go away, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. Now, I want you to see that little, tiny, two-lettered word, go. See, that, that, that's over the demons that are in this room tonight. That is over all the demons out there. That's the, over the demons that threaten you on a daily basis. That, that, that is over everything, every opposition. All he has to do is say, go. And they're gone. They're, they're out of here. They're, they're no longer a hindrance to us. And, and what a wonderful blessing that his authority supersedes theirs. In every way. So the next time you watch a scary movie where the devils went out, listen, you remember that's not the God of the Bible. That's the God of this world. That's their idea about God. You know what? Uh, in the Catholic religion, they have them little priests come out and do exorcisms and all this stupidity. You know what? They have no authority. It all belongs to Christ. Yeah. And if he says go, listen, they, uh, they don't try to fight back. Why? Because they're under his authority and they move at his bidding. That is the devil's. Now, if you will go back to verse 22 just for a minute. Uh, Matthew 8 and verse 22. The Bible says this. Verse 22, the Bible says, But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Again, he was measuring their commitment. And when he, meaning Christ, was entered to a ship, his disciples, again, I want you to see it wasn't the multitude, it was his disciples followed him. Now, apparently this was a very low number, because listen, multitudes can't get in a ship or sink it. And so apparently it was a very, a very low number, maybe the 12 and maybe a few more, I don't know. But it certainly wasn't the multitudes that had been looking for him previously. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves. But he, meaning Christ, was asleep. And the disciples came to him and woke him and saying, Save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? And he rose, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Now, yeah. the next thing I want you to see that he has dominion over is the elements of the weather. Sure. Uh, you know what? Uh, when I was a boy, I saw a tornado, and I seen it was coming, and it scared me to death. Because, see, I didn't know then that it was under Christ's authority. And that thing went by, and it shook the house, and I thought it was going to come off the foundation. Went right up the road just a bit from us, took our house, and almost tore it completely apart. Did tear a barn apart. Uh, wrapped up big old pieces of tin, look, which they look like a basketball. And you know what? <laughs> you know why it didn't hit us? Because God didn't want it to. You know why it took Miss Gladys Anderson's barn out? Because God wanted it to. I guess he was sick of the barn sitting there. I don't know. But see, it's under his authority. So uh, I think we just saw, and, and I'm going to get bits of this because... I really don't have a, a regular TV, but I was looking on Facebook, and it, it looked like there's been a recent hurricane hit around Myrtle Beach in that area in North Carolina. You, you know why it did that? 
because God wanted it to. Don't, don't give the devil any credit he's not due. Uh, and, and so we find then that the Lord God, in, in addition to the devils, and, and he's el the earthly elements is under his control, and disease is under his control. All three of those do not belong to the devil. Now, let me say this. He can give him a little authority because remember, uh, old Satan came up and said, does he serve you for not? Speaking of Job, uh, and he says, you can, you can take his health, but you can't take his life. See, he, he made a line in the sand and said, Satan, you're not going to pass that one. That seems like authority to me, don't it, you? And, and, and yeah, he got real, real sick, but it was still under Christ's authority, was it not? Uh, the devil was the vehicle, but he wouldn't go one step beyond what Christ wanted him to. That, that's the God we serve. That's, that's the God that's in rich in mercy. That's, that's, what, that's the God that's endless in his goodness and his grace. That's the God of the Bible, not the one that's presented today. <laughs> that's not the God of the Bible. <laughs> the one they have out there today. Uh, I want you to uh, go with me to, uh, to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 and verse 18. Matthew 21 and verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered, meaning Christ. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And he said unto it, meaning the tree, let no fruit go on, grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the tree withered away. And the disciples saw it and marveled how soon the tree withered away. Now, see, I, 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 there's two different instances of this, I believe, because I don't necessarily believe the Bible is repetitious. But in another gospel, it said they came back in the evening and it was, and it was dry. But here, it said it withered right in front of them. And it says they were amazed. See, they didn't leave. They didn't go anywhere. They were amazed at how quickly it withered. So we find then that the elemental earth is under his authority. There's not one thing that happens. When a tobacco crop goes sour, it was because it was God's will that it not be harvested. If the presidential election goes in November, if it goes sour, you know what? It's under the elemental control of the Almighty. No need to stress, no need to rub your hair bald, because you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ is in full control tonight. Mm -hmm. He is the one on top. And we don't worship him that way, do we? We, 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 we sometimes worship him uh, thinking that, that he needs to intervene the way we want him to intervene. Well, let me tell you this tonight. He intervenes on his own agenda. He intervenes the way that he wants to intervene and not the way we think it ought to be. And so we find that even the things that grow around us, they're all under his care. Um, they're under his dominion. They do exactly what he says for them to do. And they do nothing else. One more place. Gospel of Matthew, very familiar verses of Scripture, but I think we miss the concept sometime. Matthew chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. And Jesus saith unto him, meaning Satan. Now Satan had offered him four elements to bow down and worship him. Four different modes of of a kingdom, four different things. The only thing, you know, and, and when when he offers this, have you ever noticed the only thing he could offer was things of this earth? Yeah. He he couldn't he couldn't offer one spiritual gift. 
He couldn't ask, he couldn't offer one dominion in glory. It all had to be in the mess that we now live on. He, he didn't have any authority to do anything else. And so he, as Satan is very good at it, he used what he had. Verse 10, then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou, sh thou shalt worship the Lord God, the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So I want you to see that the devil, I mean, that Christ puts the devil on the run. See, even Satan is under his dominion. Now, modern day theology won't teach you that. They'll, they'll teach you that they're fighting one another and sometimes Satan wins and sometimes Christ wins. You know what? They don't worship the Christ of the Bible. Right. They, they worship something they've conjured up up here. And, and I want you to see that immediately. He said, get the hint, Satan. And he took off like a scalded dog. You know why? Because he's under the dominion. So the next time he's he's riding you like a, a brammer bull, don't you try to rebuke him. You go into Christ. Right. Say, so get him off me. Get him off my back. He's worried me to death. He's causing me hindrances in the things that I'm doing. And I and I will promise you, Christ will take care of the problem. He 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 will get him off your back. Why? Because he has dominion over, even over, Satan himself. Verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, what a rich blessing, and I've, I've often wondered, the uh, Bible teaches us we have our own angel. It, it, it says that your angel doeth watch over you. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I don't exactly know how this event happened, but ministry has, uh, has a connotation of providing for needs, of paying attention. You know, right before Paul and Silas w went out, it said that they were all there together ministering one to another, providing for needs. You know, how are we going to minister to one another as a people if we don't even know what our needs are. That's what old time testifying was about. And, and they would layer out what they needed prayer for. You know what they were doing? They were ministering to each other's needs. No shame, no pride, just saying, I need help with this. And, and so we find then that the next time that Satan comes your way, what I would do is remind him of this stuff right here. Remind him he is not in authority, that he is not the one that, that's going to come out on top. Remind him that his judgment day is coming at the very hand of the man that he despised. It's coming. And we ought to give the Lord great praise and glory and honor due his name because of it. Right.